Hey guys, today I'm talking about the Sword of the Spirit, which is part 7 of the Armor of God. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 14, Paul is talking about the Armor of God, and in this case he compares the Word of God, or the Scripture, to a sword, or the Sword of the Spirit. The sword for a Roman soldier was their main weapon of attack. And in the same way, the sword is the only attacking weapon mentioned for the believers. The rest of the parts of the armor of God which have been mentioned so far are all defensive things. So the Bible mentions at some point that the sword of the spirit cuts all the way to the bone and marrow, to dividing the bone and marrow. And this means that the word of God or the scripture sinks deeper or works more effectively when talking to people or commanding the enemy what to do. And Jesus gives us an example of this in the Bible, because in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, whenever the enemy was tempting Jesus, when Satan was tempting Jesus, um, Jesus used scripture against the devil as his weapon. It is interesting to note that neither the devil or Jesus ever questioned the uh, authority of the scripture. So the way the devil attacked Jesus is he took him all over the place to different mountains and to the temple and showed him all these places and said, basically, uh, you can have the world if you just bow down and worship me. And Jesus returned with telling him what the scripture actually said. So the scripture was Jesus' weapon against the enemy, just like it's ours. And since the scripture is our weapon, our main weapon, we need to read it all the time so we know what it is, so we know what it says. So when the enemy attacks us, we need to respond with scripture. A couple examples of how we can do this is if the enemy says that we're sick, if we get sick or something like that, we use the scripture and say, I am healed by Jesus' stripes, because that's what it says in Isaiah 5.3. If the enemy says you're depressed, you feel depressed or whatnot, you say, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's found in 2 Timothy 1.7. It also says in Isaiah 55.11 that his words will not return to him useless. In other words, his words are effective, and so are ours. It also says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, or does a lot of good. So these are just some good examples of how the scripture is our sword, our main weapon against the enemy.